into the shell. And in the home directory on the remote system, we'll nano, then paste, and then we'll save the changes. Let's make sure this is all on one line so we don't clobber anything. Save the changes. We'll write it as create address book db.mysql. So now we've got this file, create address book db.mysql. The MySQL client, if you run it with help, will accept a file from the command line using standard input, which means we use the lesson symbol. So here we finally have an opportunity to use standard input redirection. MySQL, various options for authentication, the database to affect it to, or input redirection, which will include the appropriate SQL commands to create the database, select the database, so on and so forth. But the database already exists, so what we should do is drop it using drop database, which is again a standard MySQL com or a standard SQL command that MySQL implements. Drop database address book, and by the way, tab completion is supported for the name of objects in MySQL. Now, when we execute show databases, which is in our history somewhere we'll see that it no longer exists. And with that said, from a separate shell, let's attempt to import the file using MySQL. And user root, password abc123, which again is not a good idea because it remains in your history. Import of the create file. We'll echo the exit status. It doesn't appear as much as it could, but if you get an exit status of zero, it means your script ran as expected. So with that said, in the separate shell, or the next shell, show databases reveals address book, use address book, show tables will reveal the contacts table, describe contacts will reveal the structure of the table, but of course it contains no data. So. The last step for us is to insert some data into this particular table. And there are various ways, of course, to insert data, but we'll use a simple SQL insert command. So 6, insert data into contacts table using insert. So a simple insert command would be as follows insert and we like to capitalize so let's go ahead although it's case insensitive so insert into contacts the name of the table then we format the fields we specify the fields this is only one form of the insert command so with that said we know that first name comes first so first name then last name but you can indicate which field you'd like to affect and providing you don't break any of the database rules such as rules pertaining to whether or not nulls are permitted then you should have no trouble inserting nulls or inserting values into the table into the column so first name last name business phone number one numero uno and the email address these are important fields we know that email is a primary key so it has to exist and it must be unique now we need to specify the values. So the values will include the following, which will be separated using commas and delimited using or indicated distinctly using single quotes. So we need a first name. Let's go ahead and describe a first name, followed by a last name, and a, or an, or a phone number that is, we'll use our phone number. Followed by an email address, a unique email address will do the trick. This will insert the values into the contacts table. That's, and we should semicolon this. Of course, most commands, most if not all commands, should terminate with a semicolon. So back to our terminal monitor, we'll execute the insert, and one row has been affected. So now when we select star from the contacts table, we'll see that there's one record in the table. Now regarding the primary key note, if we try to insert this record again, notice duplicate entry. So it doesn't allow us to insert the data. Of course, SQL protects 
us from that information, from that happening. We could change the email address slightly, let's setting it, say setting it to K1, and note it allows us to do so. How do we delete items? Well, very simple. And we'll, this is our sim seventh task. Delete record from contacts table. And of course, that's a simple delete statement with a criteria, not from the con table, but from the contacts, where email is equal to the following. Use single quotes to avoid interpolation wherever possible. So let's try this, and barring no errors, when we rerun select, you'll see that the second record has been removed, and now one record remains. So deleting is straightforward, so long as you indicate a, cr a criterion. If the criterion matches more than one record, then of course, n number of records will be removed. How about updating a record? So as our eighth task, and again, these are simple SQL tasks, but as our eighth task, we will aspire to update a record in the contacts table. And a very simple update using a criteria. So update the contacts table, setting a column that we'd like to update. So supposing we wanted to change the email column. As long as it's unique, it doesn't impact or it doesn't try to duplicate an existing email column, we should have no trouble, or email record that is we should have no trouble. So we'll set email equal to, let's now go with 2 at the following address. The criteria is important. And we can do it based on the existing email value or based on any other column, so long as it's unique. So let's go ahead and say where first name is equal to and this will perform an update query, a very simple update query, albeit. Now with that said, let's go ahead and notice it tells us how many rows match and how many change. Let's select star, and then you see the email address has been updated. So to update is quite straightforward. You can also import data using MySQL import from a text file, so long as it's structured similarly with the first name, last name, business phone one, and email columns listed in that order. MySQL import will import the data directly into the table and provides an easy way for you to go from, let's say, a spreadsheet or a database form from another type directly into this particular MySQL table. So thus far, we've done a little bit with MySQL. We haven't, by any means, delved deep into it. We've showed you how to sh set it up, ensure that when it reboots or starts, how to tighten the privileges a little bit so anonymous doesn't exist, how to set roots password, how to create an address book table, insert data into it, manipulate that data. And for more in-depth information about MySQL, of course, by all means, take a look at Linux CDT MySQL Edition or Featuring MySQL, where we go into, for a good 30 hours, everything you need to know about MySQL, consequently making you more proficient in the tool. So we'll move forward with other studies momentarily.